Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, it's another beautiful day and we are live. Yep, yep, yep. We are live here. Greetings from me, Lady Vera. <laughs> we are live here and we are so glad that you are able to join us. So today we are speaking to Reverend Dr. Alexander Yeboa who would be taking us through support systems in transition. I hope you are ready with your questions. I am, and I believe that we'll have a very, very good time. All right, so I'm gonna share with you a short video. When I come back, we would invite Reverend in the studio and off we go. See you soon. Welcome back. So welcome to Aviation Business Series. My name is Lady Vera and I am so excited today because I have a very special guest with me. He is already here in the background and he's so excited because he knows you are watching. So let me hear you. Let me know that you are with us. I'm just saying hello now. This is live, you know. So let me know that you are with us. I'm just saying hello now. Um, you can also send a, a hi, a hello in the comment section, and I'll be able to read it out. Sure, sure, sure. So who is Reverend Alexander Yabwa? And why are we having him today? So this man is very loaded. I think I think he is this right man at this particular time to really encourage us to really speak to us when it comes to transition and the support systems that we need. So I'm glad you are with us today. All right. So Reverend um, Dr. Alexander Yeboa has been in the corporate circle for, for a very long time. Okay. He started off uh, as a teacher. So he worked for about seven years doing teaching both in Ghana and in Nigeria. He also worked with SEPS, um, the, that's the customs preventive um, section. After, I think he did that for 13 years. Yes. He also worked um, as a VACT instructor. He also worked with Avians Avgo. That's the air cargo security coordinator he was. He also worked as a cargo manager. He also worked <laughs> as an air site operations manager for Avians Ghana. He also um, is the first Ghanaian consultant for ground handling operations, set up SI compliance unit and all that. Aish, the man is loaded. <laughs> so please don't forget to send me the hi because I want to know that you are following. Now, um, Reverend Dr. Alexander Yeboa is currently the air cargo head safety inspector of Ghana Civil Aviation Authority. So this man is so, so loaded. He has um, a, a master's in missions from the Trinity Theological Seminary. Yes. And he also holds an MSc in security and risk management from the University of Leicester, UK. He is also an alumni of KNUSD. 1980, wow, <laughs> and also an, an, an alumni of ENAM, is an ICAO, ICAO Regional Air Navigation Academy in Dakar, Senegal. Now this is just a summary. I can't wait for him to give you the whole rundown. It's exciting already, but as I said, I just want to make sure that you are with us. So I'm taking another break and when I come back, Send me a hi, a hello. Let me know you are with us, all right? See you soon. Thank you. 
Great. Welcome back. <laughs> Great. So now that you've said your hello and your hi, let welcome Reverend Doctor into the house. Rev, are you ready? <laughs> Rev, I can hardly hear you. See me. <laughs> hi, hi. Reverend, I can't hear you. So the, I think something just happened to the line because it was okay a few minutes ago. Okay, let's try it again. Can you hear me now? Great, now I can hear you. Perfect. <laughs> I said good afternoon, Vera. And uh, you're looking great. Good afternoon, Rev. Thank you. Thank you oh, for thank you, the Rev. opportunity. <laughs> um i guess you're already excited i'm equally excited when i when we talk about aviation uh, uh, it, it excites me it's one of the areas that i love so much and uh, mm. uh i find uh, i'm speaking my capacity uh, as a consultant i'm not speaking the capacity of, of my organization i'm speaking my capacity as an aviation consultant with specialty uh with the ground handling and air cargo and and, 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 and and security as well so i'm here on my individual capacity as a consultant a private consultant okay great reverend yeah. i know reverend yeah. you know so, how this deal is so maybe you can give us a brief about yourself even though i've given the summary of who you are maybe some of the things that you have been through, some of the places that you have worked as well from your own um, perspective. Okay. I thought you said it all, but if you want me to say, uh, to, to say something, I would do that. Um, my name is Reverend Dr. Alexia Boa. Uh, I prefer to be called a Reverend because it was difficult to become a Reverend Minister. I have to go to a tutelage of about 20 years uh, starting as ordinary church member, as usher, chief usher, becoming a, a deacon, a chief head deacon, and then finally going to Trinity Tolica Seminary uh, to do missions uh, in, in master's program. And then uh, ordained by Dr. Ward Mills, uh, okay. a great man of God, God bless him. And then uh, actually, uh, I started um not as a teacher as a research assistant at the office of the president okay. of the president at the time okay and then from there i decided i was recruited from here as an expatriate to nigeria to work in the state school ball as a teacher okay. uh, i worked there as head of department of english uh, for six years and then i came back to ghana to teach at kateko also as head of uh, Department of English and then the Ghana Education Service. Wow. I joined Customs in 1988. 1988, I joined uh, Customs Preventive Service as a preventive officer, a medal manager. Okay. And then within the period that I joined Customs, uh, a lot of things really happened, uh, which would take a lot of time if I need to enumerate it. But the good thing is that within the 13 years that I spent with Customs, I have three meritorious promotions to my credit. That means that wow. from a middle ordinary middle manager, the senior manager, principal collector in charge of the airport and a special assistant to the Commission of Customs. And I was also head of the anti smuggling task force, the whole gang. I was in charge of that. Wow. And uh, so after 12 years, 13 years, what somebody will use 13 years to get. I went to to rise to that level. Uh, wow. I resigned. I resigned in two thousand after winning the best senior worker award as a customs officer in the airport, and I joined the aviation industry. I felt I've had enough of customs, and I thought I needed a change, wow. a more challenging job. And uh, so, two thousand, the night that I won the award was heavy rain. The following. They attended in my resignation, and mm. then people were 
screaming, are you are you mad? Are you crazy? You're leaving <laughs> customs, money job, and you're going to be going to where? And they saw me in Abu by then as a security coordinator. And they couldn't understand me why I could leave a special assistant to the commissioner mm. in charge of airport. And he resigned to go and be a security mm. coordinator for a private company, a grand mm. link company at the airport. Mm. Are, you, are you in the right senses? Mm. <laughs> I laughed. I knew what I was looking for. Uh, I looked at the aviation. I felt I could do better there. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was more challenging. I went through from security coordinator. They sent me to Dakar to be trained twice on mm -hmm. air cargo security. And now, we done the air navigation uh, training center owned by Akeo. Mm -hmm. Continue in my work. I uh, became the cargo manager, promoted to cargo manager, promoted to SR operation manager in charge of several sessions at Avians. Uh, Maravians uh, had a lot of changes. I brought in the, the working together with the with the with the with the, with the IT man. We do a lot of changes to ensure smooth operation of Avians. I saw the CCTV cameras at Avian build the wall, the security gate, the sections, maintain discipline and order. When you wow. go to Avian warehouse today, you see, you see speakers hang in the warehouse. That time. The airport was chaotic. In order to bring discipline, I decided to install microphone system, public PA system, just to mm -hmm. call agents to come for their entries when they were ready. And customs gave me the right to do that. And uh, I've left the speakers, about five of them in the warehouse for posterity. I worked mm -hmm. with Avians for 30 years. And uh, during this period, I served the airport. I was a member of the first Hajj planning committee. We started the Hajj operations at the airport. I had a certificate for that, for a good work done. I've, mm -hmm. I've been a part of emergency operations, both tabletop and the major ones at the airport, the Boli and so forth. Uh, I've been part of the airport security committee uh, that ensured that the airport was run properly and ensured safety. So after 13 years of um, Avians, I came on retirement and then I had a contract at the airport company as a consultant. Mm -hmm. uh, all these years I've been in charge of the ground handling operations at um, the ground handling company, which was Avian, the first ground handling company. I then mm -hmm. Amco came as Avians and I was in charge of the ground handling. And ground handlers were those responsible making sure that there's a quick turn run for all, all aircraft that land at the airport at that time, a commercial and cargo. And so they exposed me, I was trained, I went to UK, a lot of training here, and I uh, had opportunity to do a lot of training that actually exposed me to the Graham activities. Uh, so from there, I worked with the Ghana Airport Company in those days, it was so much disorder and lack of safety on the airport, not too much discipline. I couldn't mm -hmm. pack in. My job mm -hmm. was to train and instill discipline at the airside. I trained the Ghana Airport staff on uh, compliance level mm -hmm. at, the, at, the, at the airside to ensure that uh, the operational area, which is the airport, was safe from accidents and mm -hmm. other um, activities that were associated with. With, with, with run operation, especially accidents, you know, mm. accident with uh, equipment to equipment, equipment to aircraft, commands to equipment and injuries and all that. So that was my job. My job was to bring sanity wow. or to design what we call EP equipment packing areas, equipment taking areas, ensuring that PPEs are worn, ensure that trains were carried out. Show uh -huh. that SR driving were properly carried out to avoid any accidents and incidents on the air side. I was more into safety of the aircraft, the crew members, safety of the staff on the airplane. Wow. Because my sister, uh, for more you know, you will tell the cost of accidents, 
you know, cause of accidents to aircraft and to personnel in terms of human capital mm -hmm. is running into millions and millions of dollars yearly in all airports. Mm -hmm. And actually my job, which I did excellently well, uh, from there I was asked, passed again by Ghana Airport to establish the cargo, cargo section. They mm -hmm. had a cargo section by me to be developed and groom to a standard level and to train a manager of a responsible when I leave, which mm -hmm. are the creditable. I want to say to my credit, Mr. Kinsley Fiatti is now the cargo manager for Ghana Airport Company, one of my, my, my packages, you know, that I bought up so well. <laughs> Wow. Reverend, um, so, Reverend, just a minute. So, ago. So, so Reverend, now you understand why I was saying that I just gave a summary. <laughs> because now, yes, I, 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 was, uh -huh, you see, I was actually going to ask you how you are feeling. But now, I, I have a question of saying that, did you know anything about everything that you have said or how did you know you can actually do these things? How did you get the exposure? Thank you, Vera. Um, in life, you must set up, uh, you must set, uh, you must have a plan, you must have a, a program, a projection. Where do you want to go? You must know where you want to be, what you want to become, what you want to do. Your determination and the will that I can, I had an Akan spirit, I can do a spirit, and I always felt that energy changed my life. I want to make a mark. I wanted to contribute to. The the, 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 the the profession that I have chosen. Uh, I thought I could contribute in diverse ways. Mm -hmm. And I took up the challenge. Uh, I, I, I knew the only thing that can limit me was my, was to say I can do it. Mm. But I felt, um, uh, mm -hmm. I want to be challenged all the time. Mm -hmm. And I also felt that there was something in me that I could give to society, to give to people, I could give to the airport. I want to leave, leave a legacy. Mm -hmm. I left a legacy at, 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 at custom, which is so not equal. And wow. I left a legacy at, which is not equal. And I've left a legacy at Ghana Airport yet to be equal. Wow. So all the, I did not, I didn't know anything about them. I said to learn on my own private time. I, I do a lot of work on the internet. Anything about my profession, I download anything. Sometimes I buy some of the books and they it cost me three million to buy it on my mm -hmm. own account. I download any information about aviation. Wow. One day I wish you would have to And this COVID-19 told me I have been downloaded, you know, on how mm -hmm. to transit into the normal. So I would say that let people be proactive. Let them be forward looking. Let them have a complete let them take risk, change, and don't think that where you are is only the best. Probably there's a best there's an excellent play which mm -hmm. is that the best. Wow, we've just started, Reverend, and I, I'm very excited because when we start and we, we hear about the aviation industry, basically yeah. what we know is that people are either pilots or air hostess um, or they are sometimes engineers or they are um, sales and ticketing agents or tour operators. Right. That, that mm -hmm. is actually what the perception is when we come to Ghana, uh, if I'm not wrong, and many other parts of Africa. But you are giving us a different aspect of aviation, which I don't know, but most of our schools here do not teach all these things. Do we 
start by knowing that, okay, I want to be a safety officer. So I go to school and learn safety and risk management. Or how do we start progressing in that area? Thank you, Vera. It's quite interesting, you know. You're like talking about uh, petroleum, we're talking about oil. And all that we think of probably is to go to the high seas and drink oil and probably have a filling station. No, there are too many things to oil drilling. So it is with aviation. Uh, uh, when you look at the, the spectrum of aviation, like Riley said, it's only pilots and cabin crew and all that. No. Uh, aviation, the, 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 the piloting, the cabin crew, the aircraft in this stuff is the, is, the, is the upstream, the upstream. And then from the upstream, you come down to the bottom and then you go to the vertical level of aviation. So I'll, I'll see the, 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 the lateral level of aviation, the vertical, I'll deal with the pilots and the crew members and then all that. They are at the top there. And then when you come down, which is the downstream, which is which goes lateral, that is both left, right, is we got scars. Down there, you can be a safety officer. Down there, you can be a ground holding expert, equipment operator. Down there, we have the ground handlers. They are in charge of handling the aircraft when it lands. We have different aspects. We have dispatchers. We have the bus drivers. We have the cleaner, the groomer that go on board the aircraft. Besides that, we have a whole um, session. If the ground handler does cargo, because in Ghana, for instance, almost about 60% of cargo comes on passenger aircraft. So mm -hmm. it has to be offloaded. We have a whole warehouse that has to take care of all these, and we have to engage people. So you must know something about cargo. You can go to the IATA website, and there's cargo training there. You can go to the IATA website. You can be, you want to become an, I mean, let's say, a safety inspector. You can look at mm -hmm. the training, the courses, the IOSA training courses, safety training courses that are available from, I mean, rudimentary to an advanced stage. And then you can go through all these courses. You can also become uh, an engineer because we have equipment. We have a special session uh, that deals with maintenance because the equipment must be properly maintained to ensure it don't run into the aircraft, brake systems and all that. You have the, uh, the fueling companies that supply the airline with fuel. That's mm -hmm. a different area altogether. We have the catering section that supply food to the, to the aircraft. It's a different area and they need people. We have what we call security, uh, not aviation security, but we call them profilers. These are people that check your air, the passport when you are doing check-in. They are on the airport making sure that your bags are not tempered with. These are all part of the ground hand that goes on, on the apron. So you don't necessarily need to be a cabin crew, a ticketing officer, um, uh, let's say PH, uh, I mean, um, a passenger handling agent, to be able to get into aviation. You see, um, and, and aviation is an industry that you only uh, may come out of it when you cannot walk, when you cannot lift your limb. You get in there, you never come out. To the day you want to come out. Mm. So mm. there's so many areas that you can get in there, can get in there. Go to mm -hmm. cargo, warehouse, dangerous goods. If I, the greatest one that I would encourage them is to do a dangerous goods course, DG. It is money, not only in Ghana, it is money in Europe, it's money in the airline industry, it's money everywhere. Once you are certificated, DG, I mean, as a person, <laughs> You sell like hot cake. <laughs> Reverend, this one is a pop from. good. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but Reverend, let me find out. Um, is it because we don't have a national airline? That is why we are not seeing all this. 
or we are not exploring enough? Um, it's not necessarily the national ally. The national ally would help. But um, I think that um, our market share of the aviation industry is a bit on the lower side. I don't know why, because of, in terms of population and all that, and in terms of uh, local content, let's say private operators like our, like fashion, like unity, and all that. You remember, we had our national airline came in, you know, and you could know the number of people that the national airline was engaged. So yes, the national airline could be a big factor because if I have a national airline that is flying all the routes like the Ghana Airways was doing, and then Ghana International came in to have to support. Um, then you 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 increase the aviation base base in the in the standard. We are not only looking at cabin crew, we are not looking at two pilots in the cockpit must raise another small takeover. We are looking at the ground support services. We are looking at more ground handling companies coming into the country. For instance, one of the, of the ground handling companies employs as many as 1,000 people, you know, even at this difficult time. We have three of them that are operating. So if we are able to have a national airline with, with, with a serious local content, uh, then we be able to uh, uh, get a lot of the young guys, guys that want to go into aviation into these areas. But like you really said, I think education has not gone down very well mm -hmm. to let them know that it's not, it's not all uh, passenger handling, it's not all cabin crew, it's not all only dispatch, it's not all, all, all captain uh, being a pilot and all that. There are other areas that are equally Pain in the aviation that they can also focus on. So why not? When the national airline comes, if you go to Ethiopia, for instance, the Ethiopian Airlines, of course, uh, uh, virtually everybody in Addis works at the airport, <laughs> right? Because why? Is it fleet of aircraft talk of them in hundreds? They are flying everywhere. COVID period, they never stop flying, right? So if we are able to manage our national airline, national carrier, and imbibe, imbibe a lot of patriotism, and that we have an attitudinal change, attitudinal change, mm -hmm. character change, character change, I want mm -hmm. to see a new national airline that is for us, and that must grow, nature it to grow, nature it. When I was in custom, my commissioner, the J.Y. Kofi said that when you have a work to do, you know, and it's in the calabash, you eat around the calabash. You don't eat inside the calabash. If you eat inside the calabash, and you struggle and you drink, that's the end of it. It's like a grass cutter who is in the bush. Anytime you go to the bush and see the, the green grass there, you see beautiful green grass, then you go and this side, you see toilet, the, the, the droppings of the grass cutter, you start looking there. They are not there. They are inside the green grass that has not been cut. Ah. I mean, I mean, don't touch where they stay, where they, they breathe. They leave the place and go a distance away. So if we will also adopt an attitude to keep what is ours, Ghana Airways mm. or the national career that they want to benefit very soon according to the Minister of Aviation, and we, will, for, 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 a, for the first time in our lives, we own that airline as very own. Mm -hmm. Our nature, I will take care of it. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse uh, 25 to 33, Jesus was talking, of course, talking about a husband and a wife. That the wife has so many challenges. We should nature the wife, clean the wife, wash the wife keep the wife, he has wrinkles and spot, and nature it to become perfect. Right. So what will be our attitude to the new national airline? It's the same old 
I mean, game that we think we must milk it is the same old game that in aviation you must make money. If you are an airline official, you must ride in a big car. So whatever you need to do, whatever man that was good airline, you packet it, cargo are underway, tickets are flown from other stations to Ghana, from Ghana to other stations, orchestra crossing, you know. Uh, so we try to get to Maria now in Nambia. So, yeah, I tell that this country is blessed. So my resource. We are country loved by people who want to come in here. We can make a hub. A crowd can be a hub. We can mm -hmm. turn things around. If Reverend, please people. hold on on that statement for me. <laughs> because now the discussion is becoming juicy. I just want to make sure that our people are with us. So I can see um, a lady called Cynthia. And Cynthia has been following. I mean, this is Cynthia telling us that can do spirit. Cynthia has been following. Hello, Jack, as well. Hello, Gideon. Hello, Michael. Thank you all for watching. Reverend is giving us some very interesting details. Great, great discussion going on. Please tell a friend and tell another friend to come and join us because we are just starting. We are just starting. I would go for a short commercial break. And when I return, we'll go into the different aspect of safety as we move to the new aviation. Hold on. Tomorrow sounds good, with its new words, hot tips and best kept secrets, like local beats, touring bands and classic tunes. It's the cheer of birdsong, crashing waves and sleepless cities. Tomorrow looks good, with familiar faces, colourful characters and deep blue seas, like nothing you imagined, everything you dreamed, bright as a canopy of stars. It's your first flight, first night in town, and setting off at first light. Tomorrow feels good with best laid plans, the best in town, and the best you've ever had. Like sealed deals, bucket lists, and being there when it counts. It's the home away from home, the thrill of the unknown. In it together or alone. Tomorrow isn't a world away. Stay home for now. Dream forever. Hello and welcome back to Aviation Business Series. We have been discussing the topic support systems in transition with Reverend Dr. Alexander Yabua. And my, oh my, 
when it comes to the details of why we are where we are today as a country when it comes to the national airline please stay with us okay because reverend is talking about something very deep when it comes to values when it comes to decisions when it comes to accountability and today i am so glad that we have him here welcome back reverend Okay, hello. <laughs> I hope we can get through to him. Okay, so please stay with us. Um, we want to take more questions from you. Cynthia, I can see you. And um, Jack, I can see you. Please let the questions flow. He would be right back with us. We are still trying to connect to him again but I know that we have learned a lot. He has actually opened our eyes to realize that it is not only the pilot or the engineer, there are a lot of other professions when it comes to aviation. So we are still talking about support systems in transition and Reverend Dr. Alexander Yebwa is um, our guest for today. So we're still trying to connect with Reverend, but in the meantime, let, let me know that you are with us. Please leave a comment um leave a comment so we know you are with us leave a comment so we know you're with us All right so we're just sharing a few okay so cynthia i say lack of publicity or awareness from gacl um airlines ground ops companies or better still stakeholders true 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 so cynthia you're talking about the the reason why the national airline is really not in place i see i see okay this is also from her until now a lot of people perceive airport as ghana airways you see you see so that is why we need to do the education that is why we need to keep on educating ourselves that if somebody's working at the airport doesn't mean that the person knows everything about aviation the person might be doing a section of um aviation aviation at the airport but there are a lot of other section of aviation of aviation let the comments keep coming in we're still going to try and connect with reverend in just a few seconds i'm sure he'll come back on the line yes i'm sure he'll come back on the line all right tomorrow sounds good with its new words, hot tips, and best kept secrets, like local beats, touring bands, and classic tunes. It's the cheer of birdsong, crashing waves, and sleepless cities. Tomorrow looks good, with familiar faces, colorful characters, and deep blue seas, like nothing you imagined, everything you dreamed, bright as a canopy of stars. It's your first flight, first night in town, and setting off at first light. Tomorrow feels good with best laid plans, the best in town, and the best you've ever had. Like sealed deals, bucket lists, and being there when it counts. It's the home away from home, the thrill of the unknown. In it together or alone. Tomorrow isn't a world away. Stay home for now. Dream forever. Let us know what you have learned. Um, I'm just sharing a few of what we've spoken about. He's shown us the other um, sectors of aviation that we have not looked at. So we have the ground handling, the cleaning, the safety officers, cargo officers, flight uh, dispatch officers, maintenance officers, catering, fueling, dangerous goods, which he actually mentioned that is now the hottest cake when it comes to aviation and its profession. So let me know um, the question that you want to ask Reverend, let me know, all right, as we stand by for him. Okay, I really want to hear from you, so <laughs> please come on board, let me hear from you. Reverend will be with us short. Please come on board, let me hear from you. Great, 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 great. Okay, so we have a question here from Alfred. Um, Alfred is saying that, moving forward what advice does he have for the industry players especially in our jurisdiction 
what advice does he have for the up and coming young ones? So Alfred, if you are still with us, Reverend will be coming back shortly to give his advice to industry players and to the young ones like ourselves. Okay, Selena. Okay, let me see your question. Give me a second, let's see. Okay, Selena, hi, hi, hi. Thank you for joining us. Selena is saying that, is the government really, really, really ready to own an airline? Can they really convince Ghanaians they would not run it as an all the other government departments? And would it be really independent? Selena, your question is very justified because we have seen it happening twice and i know you are still thinking about it so as we wait for reverend let me tell you what our reverend you are in i was just going to tell selena what you said hello hello reverend yeah. yes ma'am okay is it better now yeah better i'm sorry uh technology sorry <laughs> reverend so we have an interesting um topic um, and we have a question from Selena, one of our viewers. And the question is exactly what I spoke about earlier. And this is her question. I'll just share it with you. She's asking, is the government really ready to own an airline? Can they convince Ghanaians they would not run it as other government departments? And will it really be independent? Hmm. Uh, Vera, um, yes. a, uh, what's the name of the name of the, the, the lady who has a question? Okay, so her name is Selena. Okay, Selena, good afternoon. Uh, that's a very interesting question. Um, Vera, it's difficult but answerable. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, Selena. Um, like I said, uh, I greeted you. Yes, yeah, the government is very serious. I know the. Uh, I'm not being political. Uh, we've heard the minister of aviation. I know the kind of person he is. He's very serious um, uh, minister, and I know that he means what he says. Uh, recently, um, he's come back again with the issue of a national airline. And as to the composition of the airline, whether it's going to be 100% wholly owned, just like Ghana Airways, which was 80, 70, 30, and uh, Ghana International. Um, I don't know how, what kind of arrangement is going to be, but I know that we want a carrier that will fly the national colors. And, 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 and from what has happened, um, before with Ghana Airways and the Ghana International that started at um, 2006 and then uh, went off into um, 2010. Um, I think that this time they mean business. And I think that there will be more private participation than government participation to allow proper management. And I'm looking at what has been happening when it comes an issue of a government property uh, the treatment is different if it is for a private one. The same person who is not handling the government well, the government property well, will do excellently well when he goes into a private um, sector. So let us hope that it will come on board. Let us hope that this time, from Hans' side, we will do the right thing. And that will be the third time. And I hope that going for the third time, we have learned so much that we should be able to do the right thing. So Serena Shu, yes, let us keep on praying that um, the National Airline will come on board. And then I know that things will work out well. Reverend, can you um, go deeper a bit about the, the impact of having a National Airline? How does it translate into any benefits for the ordinary Ghanaian, for the students who are learning in totality? 
for the business owner and for the professional innovation. I um, mean, if you look at aviation, not hello. Please go ahead. I'm here. If you look at aviation, not only as a, um, a very prestigious operation, is the fastest way to move. Is the only means that one of the greatest means that is keeping the whole world together. Look at what has happened in the world within this under this COVID nineteen um, challenges that has come. The pandemic. Airlines are not flying and business has come to a stop. Work to me, some of the shops in Ghana and a lot of things are getting, I mean, short. Things are getting expensive every day. Jobs have been lost in thousands. I remember uh, EasyJet in the UK had to lay over more about 6,000 I mean, staff. So back to your question, if we have a national airline, I mean, the, the benefit is as, is, is, is as enormous as you can, your mind, your imagination can carry you. If you had one airline, an airline that has, as you see, about five fleet of aircraft all flying, moving to different destinations. How many pilots? How many um, um, crew? And then coming down there, down there, how many ticketing staff? The ground handlers may need to add to their number because a new airline has come in. Having worked as a ground as a airside operation manager, I know that anytime we are picking a new airline, we have to recruit and train new people that would definitely be responsible for that particular airline. Because every airline has its own, I mean, product line, its own, I mean, uh, um, uh, uh, it has its own style, the way it, it, it wants things to be done. So you should be able to train the people to meet the needs of the airline. So when you the airline comes on board, Ghana is profitable. Now the you look at B, look at the I mean British Airways and look at the the the, the routes that are most profitable. Lending Ghana is one of the most profitable routes. I mean Ghana US profitable. Ghana South Africa Johannesburg profitable. Not talk about the West Coast. If you are flying to a West Coast country, you are being charged. Five, four, four to five hundred dollars, right? How many hours? About two and a half hours. You know how much are they giving you in terms of food and all that? And then you travel to Europe about six, seven hours. You know, and you have to pay between four to eight hundred dollars, and thereabout at ordinary seasons. You can imagine the airline operator will get money. It's profitable if you run properly. Um, it will create jobs for our people upstream and downstream, vertical and lateral. Ground handlers will have to employ more people. Catering staff will have to employ more people. Profilers will take more people. Aviation security airport operators will take more people because Ghana Airport Company will have additional work to do in making sure that they run the airport properly and therefore, uh, according to standards, and therefore, um, uh, any um, stakeholder that has something to do with our airport operations and making the airport run well, we have to top up staff or we have to do some rearrangement. But most invariably, anytime there's a new airline coming in, there's recruitment. There's recruitment. There's recruitment in the ground handling level, recruitment at the catering level, Recruitment at the security level, recruitment at the profiling level, recruitment at the cargo level, recruitment at I mean, I mean dangerous goods level, at all various levels of, 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 of a job requirement that will make that airline turn around. You know, so it's a complex maze of operational activities that keep one aircraft take off from the ground. When it lands, that same complex activity goes on for offloading, uh, disembarkation, and offloading of passenger bus, of cargo, embarkation, reloading, and so forth. So the ability of a new airline have a new national carrier, it cannot be, it's not easily quantifiable. I believe that it all requires discipline 
and make it viable. When we, we say all these things in the milieu or in, in, the, in, the, in the arena of viability, right, on the pedestal of viability, so that if people will make the airline viable, why will KLM calling us to open the SP? Why will all the European airlines want us to start operation? Will KLM come? Are they for the Christmas? Why is KLM coming? Air France is coming. British Airways is operating a Jumbo just 747-200 model, right? Um, I mean, Air Brussels is, is, is operating, right? Uh, South Africa is operating. Ethiopia is operating. 20, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, 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 seven, seven times a week, right? So why? I mean, our is doing excellently. We're actually holding the airport. So if you are not making profit, why would they come? Nobody is a father Christmas. So we should not have a new Ghana, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, Ghana carrier or the new Ghana airline uh, for the Christmas. It should not be an arena for people to make money for themselves. They should make money for the airline. So the young ones that want to experience this beautiful, excellent joy in aviation, they dress properly, look smart, and looking nice and beautiful, handsome looking young people with all confidence in themselves because he works at the airport. No matter at what level that the person works at the airport, he has some aura of importance around the person. Mm -hmm. Vera, wow. have I wow. You have, you have answered. And oh, Reverend, from your voice, I can really hear the question that you carry when it comes to aviation. I can really, really hear the question. What, what happened? Is there a story behind, or this is something that is very connected to you? Do you have people in the industry who really need to hear this on a personal level? Oh, of course. Uh, I, I want to go to the minister. I really, he's a friend. We're in school together um, at, uh, at, at, at Borga. He was at Notre Dame Secondary School. I was big, at the big boss. He was my senior though. And uh, being an aviation man, I can walk to his office. He knows my passion for it, and he understands. I know he's working out plans and his idea of bringing, not even an idea, it's, it's on the table. It's coming, it's going to happen live. I know he will not leave. Um, he's going to be there, he's going to be safe for long, and he wants to see this baby, this new Ghana, uh, what Ghana, what they call it, Ghana Airlines, born. And natured into uh, a, a strong, uh, a viable airline like any of the airlines in Africa. You know, I know he has a passion for it. And we will talk him. We will give our, our idea. We are ready to be now at our age to go in and give our support in every area that we need to want to come on board. Yeah. Great. Reverend, as we wait for this national airline to come, as professionals, as business people, as young um, admirers of this aviation industry, what should we be doing in preparation for our own national airline and any other corporate industry or work? What are some of the things we should be doing as we wait for a big thing to happen? Very good. Well, um, it's all preparation. Even if you prepare, if you, if, you, if you prepare, the only way you can get ahead of things is to prepare. When you don't prepare, you prepare to fail. What are they doing themselves? They need to read, they need to look at the right, they need to talk to us. We will not to speak to them to get the, 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 the various courses that they need to do. When you come to GATA, that is a Civil Aviation Training Academy, um, there are a lot of courses that they can actually look at and then begin to uh, uh, build themselves up uh, professionally. You know, this work requires a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, um, experience, but when you don't start, how do you gain the experience? I always believe that I didn't gain the experience until I was given the opportunity to, to, to work. And, and, and all that they need to do is additional only look at um, passenger handling. They should not only look at cabin crew. They should also look at 
cargo. How many women do we actually have in cargo? We don't have too many women. We in don't cargo. have not too many. But for instance, this when the COVID became an issue, is only the cargo that has survived the world aviation. It's mm -hmm. cargo. Cargo is sitting on first class passenger seats. Passenger is cargo is sitting on on a business class. Cargo is sitting on economy class. Cargo have survived Ghana Airport Company. Cargo have survived survived our airport. Cargo has survived the world's airport and the world aviation. Without cargo, I was surprised when I was reading the IATA website that, car, I mean, uh, IATA was able to make some profit. And cargo is actually making some profit, even in the midst of COVID. So I want the ladies, I want the young ladies, I want the young men to go into cargo, to study cargo, to study dangerous goods, to study safety management systems at the airport, operations to go into this area, to go into aviation security, very, very, uh, 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 what do I call it, a, a viable very area. Very sensitive and viable area. Pardon? A very sensitive and viable area. Very sensitive. You know, I have colleagues that we all started together, but those who actually branch into aviation security and decided to perceive it into a more professional level are all ICAO certified instructors. They follow like anything. You know, it, the exposure is so big. You don't ever go on time. You're traveling to countries to do inspection, to do auditing, to look at the security structures in their airports. Because, because of terrorism, we share information. Whatever happened at Airport B could also happen at Airport C. And therefore, I think it has become so important now, safety and security. And I propose that our young people that are coming up um, can go into these areas. Mm -hmm. I know it's expensive trying to take up an IATA course on uh, safety management, an IATA course on aviation security, I had a course on, uh, on, on, on DG, but we ran some, I had, I mean, Ghana Civil Aviation ran some at the academy. We can also go on AC, ACI, listen to me, ACI. I mean, um, ACI means, uh, what do you call it, uh, Airport Council International. Airport Council International started running courses that are fairly reasonable. And I want to mention one gentleman known as Mr. Butchie. He's with Ghana Airport, SR Operations, Alfred Butchie. He is raising up to master's level in that area. If they can, if you can link them up to Mr. Butchie, he'll be a good referee for them to do the ACI courses. When I went to Canada last year, I went to Montreal for an ICAO, I mean, train the trainers course. Um, ACI is also there, IATA and ICAO, they are all so close. They are all uh, in Montreal. So whatever the, you gain from ACI is recognized by the, by the operators and you, you, you get jobs to do. Yeah. Great. Reverend, um, for the first time we have gone beyond our time, but it is because the topic is very sensitive and you have so much to offer us in terms of knowledge, and so we want to thank you, but before we allow you to go, we want to also um, talk about safety. Safety, as we are preparing to open the, the skies, we don't know when, but how, how are we prepared? How well are we prepared? How well are we prepared as a country? Um, how well are we prepared, Reverend? Uh, we, 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 uh, the preparation is ongoing. Uh, we have convenient entry facilitation repository. We have uh, um, thematic solutions, which is also deals with latest on coronavirus travel regulations from IATA, uh, telling us restrictions in various areas in various countries with all the maps. We have biosafety air travel uh, roadmap. Uh, for restarting aviation, uh, and all deal with various safety um, issues. Uh, Ghana 
Civil Aviation is a regulatory uh, authority that is overseeing the safety operations of the um, Ghana airports. And I know they've been doing a good job. We have put in place the various safety protocols that we need to do. And there have been normal visits and inspections of the airport, continuous meetings of stakeholders at the airport, uh, speaking to airlines, IATA, ICO, sending documents all the time. You know, so we are equal to the task in terms of um, going through the necessary safety protocols at the airport, the long going. The airport has been, I mean, I mean, fumigated, spraying, and safety measures in terms of the airport. Uh, what they call it, uh, um, uh, airport clinic is ready. We they have the health um, uh, post in at the airport. Uh, are all working. More staff have been put in place. And we the various uh, stages in going through to ensure that you are cleared to board the, 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 the aircraft. We're doing that is a, it's an ongoing it's a task force that has been formed that is overseeing all these things. So Port Health is doing very well. They are all there, they are all in place. And we hope that when they give us the go ahead, um I want to show the traveling the Ghana airport. Uh, Kotoka International Airport will be very safe for you to travel through because the various uh, protocols and regulatory requirements have been properly supervised and injected into the system for us to have a very smooth takeoff. Thank you so much, Reverend. We've taken um, a lot of your time, but this has been very insightful. Um, how are you feeling, Reverend? How do you feel? Um, I, 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 I'm excited. I'm, I'm happy you are doing, Reverend, you are doing a good job. You've challenged me. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm becoming ashamed that I have so much knowledge. I've not sold it. I've not given out to people. And mm. you brought me on. Uh, what I'm trying to say, and I want to encourage the young one, is that the limit, the sky is the limit. When they have God and they have the in their lives, they can do anything. I'm not an engineer, but I satisfy equipment on the apron. I'm not an engineer. I do me things that engineers have to do. So if they decide to branch into any area of aviation, they can do it. It's determination. And this what they can do. I would encourage them to live very seriously, honest life. There's no shortcut to anything. I want them to be very develop very high moral turpitude, you know, a sense of responsibility and discipline. My expectation in all the gentlemen and ladies that are listening to me is that they will develop a culture and a sense of patriotism. Our nation, whatever they put them to work. They'll put them in first and they didn't tell what comes second. But then I'm so good. I'm really excited. I'm able to impact people this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Reverend. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the Aviation Business Service team and everybody that is watching, and everybody that will be watching after this, we want to make a page. Um, you taking time off your busy schedule to be with us today. Thank you so much, Reverend. God bless you. We'll see you soon. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Wow, it's been exciting. I, I mean, we really do want to apologize for not being able to have him back on camera. I mean, technical issues came up, but I know that you have taken away a lot. And your mindset about the national airline, your mindset about how to be prepared for the corporate world and every other profession that you hold very esteemed, Dean. I mean, you have learned a lot and I am glad that you joined us today. Uh, we would be here again um, next week, God willing, on Saturday. And we are looking at um, technology and business in transition. But till then, Please let your questions keep coming. In case you want to reach Reverend after this program, let us know. We'll definitely connect you 
to the various schools that he mentioned, to the various professionals who can assist you if you are up and coming. If you are actually an established brand and you want us to support you in business, let us know. Let us let us know and we'll be here to support you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for staying with us. Thank you very, very much. I'll see you next week. All right. Stay safe. All right. Stay safe. Stay safe. God bless you.